Isang mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. Sa awit 47, kayong lahat ay magpalakpakan at sumigaw sa Diyos ng may kagalakan. Ang Panginoon, ang kataas-taasang Diyos ay kagalang-galang. Siya ang dakilang hari sa buong sanlibutan. Tayo po ay sama-samang umawit sa Panginoon. Can stand against you. 
And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Sorry, Lord, for the things I made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Sorry, Lord, for the things I made. And it's all about you. It's all about you.
Good morning po mga kapatid. Kamusta po kayo? It's been a long while since the last time I preached to Christ the world. That's why I'm so thankful to God for this opportunity to share with you what God has put in my heart. I hope you are excited because I'm really excited. Ang inilagay po na topic sa akin ay uh, working together for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 29. And so, let me start this way. Kasi po next week ay Father's Day na. So let me greet all the, the fathers in, in Christ in the world because I, I won't be here next week. Uh, kaya advance Happy Father's Day po. And since it's Father's Day, I'm using my father for my introduction in honor of him. I truly believe ang, ang, ang tatay ko po was a builder. He, he really loves to build. Uh, maliit pa po ako, I, I've seen... Uh, kung ano na yung mga binuo niya at mga ginawa niya. In fact, yung aming bahay na kinilakihan, uh, bago po itinayo itong aming bahay na bato, yun po ay gawa sa kahoy, dalawang palapag. Ang gumawa po nun, tatay at lolo ko lamang. At uh, kapag may nasiran sa sakyan sa aming mga kamag-anak, jeepney, um, yung Ford Fiera, ang tatay ko rin po ang gumagawa. Uh, yung aking mga bike na nagamit mula pa nung ako'y malit hanggang sa ako'y mag-college, uh, Tatay ko lang po ang gumawa nun. Hindi po siya nabili ng buo. Bumibili lang po siya ng pyesa. And then, siya na po ay yung nag-a-assemble. At ang trabaho po ng tatay ko, gumagawa po siya ng mga statues at gamit niya yung semento at plaster of Paris, escayola. Nilalagay niya yung sa ulmahan para makabuo siya, makagawa siya ng mga statues. Um, dahil po doon, uh, nasaksihan ko yung uh, ginagawa niya. May, may mga napansin po ako, may mga natutunan po akong prinsipyo. When it comes to building, and I know that there are so many factors to consider when we are building. And I'm not a civil engineer. Uh, hindi po ako expert. Pero ito lang po yung nakita ko, natutunan ko, dahil na rin po sa, sa aking tatay. Uh, may tatlong mahalagang aspeto po ng pagbuo. When you build something, you really need to consider these things. Number one is the structure. You know, ano ba yung binubuo mong struktura? What are you building? Dapat maliwanag sa'yo kung ano yung binubuo mo para pag nabuo, alam mo, yan yung gusto kong buuin. Ba- bahay ba to O five-story structure or skyscraper? And then, napakalago po ng uh, foundation. San mo ito itatayo? What are you building on? We know kung mahina yung foundation, maging mahina din yung structure. And last of all, yung materials. Na napakalaga yung the best materials, hindi second class ang gagamitin para maging maganda at tumagal yung struktura. And of course, if you consider all these things, yung tatlong bagay na to, anything you build, it will stand the test of time. Tatagal. Kaya may mga structures hanggang ngayon, nandito pa rin, buo pa rin, nakatayo pa rin, kahit 100, 200 years old na. Gayun then it also stand against calamities, kahit dumating yung bagyo, yung uh, malakas na hangin, earthquake, sunog, nakatayo pa rin yung structure. And of course, yung tinatawag na uh, admiring your creation. Kapag maganda yung ginawa, di ba, napapawaw ka. Kaya sabi ko nga, 100, 200 years old na structure, di ba, mapapawaw ka sa ganda. Hindi lang dahil tumagal sa panahon, kundi napakaganda ng pagkakagawa. And of course, bakit po? If you consider all these three, structure, foundation, materials. And so, pwede niyo po yung tanong, anong kinalaman nito sa ating tema for the month, which is working for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Alam niyo po ba, mga kapatid, bilang mga anak ng Diyos, we are called to advance God's kingdom. Sabi po ng Panginoong Isus, Matthew 11 verse 12, talking about John the Baptist, sabi niya, from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful people have been seizing it. Jesus in a way was saying, God's kingdom has been powerfully advancing and powerful people are advancing it. Naniniwala po ako yung tinutukoy niyang forceful people doon. Ay tayo po yun. We are called to advance the, uh, God's kingdom forcefully or powerfully. Kaya nga po bilang mga anak ng Diyos, di po tayo naligtas so panghintayin lang na makapunta sa langit. Yes, heaven is our destination. But while we are here, habang buhay po tayo, we need to advance God's kingdom here on earth. Ibig sabihin po ng pag-advance ng kaharian ng Diyos is letting His will be done. And ayong will ng Diyos, kaligtasan ng mga kaluluwa. So we need to preach God's word, good, the goodness of God to the ends of the earth. We do this so that people too 
will be part of God's kingdom and also part of advancing it. Pero ang tanong, paano po natin may advance ang kaharian ng Diyos? Dito po pumapasok ang kahalaga ng tatlong bagay na binanggit ko kanina. Dapat po natin tong i-consider. Before we can even advance God's kingdom, it needs to be built in us. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot advance God's kingdom kung yung God's kingdom wala pa sa'yo. Because God's kingdom is not an organization, not a structure, not an institution, but it is us. Tayo po yung church. We are not a building, not a structure, or a place of worship. So for God's kingdom to be built or to advance, we need to be able to answer these three questions. What are we building in us? What are we building on? And what are we using to build? Yan po ang makikita natin sa mga talatang 21 to 29 ng Matthew chapter 7. We will learn how we can advance God's kingdom by considering these three aspects as we build ourselves in Christ. Tatlong letter R lang po. Relationship, responsibility, reliance. Tignan po natin yung sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Unang-una, relationship. What are we building in us? Ito po yung sagot, relationship in Christ. By knowing God and being known by Him. Napakalaga po nun na meron po tayong relasyon sa Panginoong Yesus. Kilala natin ang Diyos at kilala tayo ng Diyos. Ano po sabi sa verse 21 to 23? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. When you read this, this might sound strange to you because Jesus started by saying, hindi lahat ng tumatawag sa akin ng Panginoon, Panginoon, makakapasok sa akin karyan. In fact, even if you prophesy in my name, if you preach in my name, you, you cast out demons in my name, you perform many miracles in my name, hindi kayo makakapasok. And ito pa yung matindi. Jesus calls them, you who practice lawlessness. What's going on? Ano ibig sabihin ng Panginoon Jesus doon? Why, why did He call them those who practice lawlessness? Diba, we encourage people to serve God. Diba, it's a sign that you are advancing God's kingdom when you are serving Him. Diba, yung pag, pagtawag sa Diyos, yung pananalangin, yung pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos, yung pagpapagaling sa mga may sakit, pagpapalaya sa mga inaalihan ng masamang spirito, that is serving God. That is the ministry we want to do. And yet, sabi ng Panginoon, yung mga gumagawa nun, they practice lawlessness. Why lawlessness? Ano ibig sabihin ng lawlessness? Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin po ng lawlessness, it's a state of disorder due to the disregard of the law. Sa madaling salita po, you know the law, you have the law, but you are not practicing it. You are disregarding it. And so si po dun sa itinuturo ng Panginoong Yesus, nung sinabi niyang, I never knew you. Binibigyan po ng halaga ng Panginoong Yesus yung pong relationship. It is being known over serving. It is relationship with God rather than working for God. Sabi po sa Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments defend, depend the whole law. And the prophets, in a way, sinasabi po ng Panginoong Jesus, do you want to fulfill the law and the prophets? Love God, love people. Do you want to, to do the will of God? And yung sabi ng Panginoong Jesus dun kanina, ba? You, only those who do the will of God will enter the kingdom of God. If you want to do the will of God, here it is. Love God, love people. Do you want to be known by God? Kasi yun po yung itinuturo ng law and the prophets is about being known by God and knowing God. Simple and slim, simple po. Love God, love people. It all starts here. Loving God, loving people. Those who do this is known by God and know God. Yung mga gumagawa po nito, yung nagmamahal sa Diyos at nagmamahal sa kapwa niya, sigurado ako, kilala ang Diyos at kilala ng Diyos. 
Hindi po tayo tinuturuan ng Panginoong Isus na huwag mag-ministry at hindi mahalaga yung ministry. In fact, we are being encouraged. Let's serve the Lord. It is important that we serve God and not just be an attender or a member of a church. Pero tandaan niyo po, ministry should be a result of being known to God. That, that's where it starts. Makilala ang Diyos at makilala ng Diyos. Sino po yung nakakilala sa Diyos at kinikilala ng Diyos? Yung nagmamahal sa Kanya, yung nagmamahal sa Kanyang kapwa. Yung pong ministries should be an overflow of our great love for God. Bakit po? We can actually serve God without knowing Him. We can actually do a lot of ministries pero our hearts are far from Him. We can be busy for the kingdom but not for the King. Why is it not acceptable? Because of our human nature. Ano po ibig kong sabihin? Alam niyo po, yung human nature po natin, ang gusto niyan, tayo parati yung uh, sikat, tayo po yung nasa sentro. Pag ang ministry po ang number one sa atin, hindi yung Diyos na ating dapat miniministeryohan. Ang mangyayari po, sa simula, it's all about God, but suddenly, e-entra yung sarili, it's now, it's all about us. Hindi na po ang Diyos. Yun po yung ating nature. And we cannot do away with that nature while we live. The only way we can overcome that nature is by letting God's nature take over our lives. His nature becomes our nature when we are busy knowing Him. When that happens, true ministry happens. Why? Because it's just an overflow of God's nature in our lives. Kaya ganun po napakalaga mga kapatid na unahin natin ang Diyos. I-prioritize natin siya over all things in our lives. Simula pa lang sa umaga, siya na ang hanapin. Magbabad sa kanyang salita. Manalangin. Hanapin. Kauhawan. Kagutuman ng kanyang presensya at ang kanyang mga salita. When we put God first, we build our relationship with Christ. And that is knowing God and being known by God. And that's how we advance God's kingdom. Alam po, this pandemic, Marami nagsasabi, marami yung nawala sa kala. And it is true. This pandemic has taken a lot of things from us. It has taken our time. It has taken our jobs. Yung ba, wala ng trabaho. It has taken our education. Walang school. It has taken a lot of things from us. Yung iba, yung health, yung, yung buhay. Pero alam niyo po, if there's one thing that the pandemic could not take away from us, that is our relationship with Christ. Kaya po, kahit may pandemic, may quarantine, hindi man tayo makapag-ministry. The, the, the pandemic has taken our ministries. Okay lang. Why? Because we still have our relationship with Christ. Kahit nandun tayo sa ating bahay, kahit nandun tayo naka-lockdown, we can still go to the Lord, we can still pray, we can still talk to Him and listen to Him and, and learn from Him. We can still know God and God knows us. Kaya sabi ko po, thank you Lord, kahit may pandemic, hindi niya nakuha yung pinakamahalaga sa akin. And that is my relationship with you. Kaya ganun din po sa atin mga kapatid. Kaya nga this pandemic, this is our opportunity to spend time with the Lord. Lalo tayong magbabad sa Diyos, lalo natin siyang kilalanin. Dahil nasa atin ang oras, nasa atin ang pagkakataon para lalong makilala ang Diyos at mabuild yung ating relationship sa Kanya. Secondly mga kapatid, yung katanungan, what are we building on? Ano po yung ating foundation? And that the foundation is responsibility. Ano po yung responsibility? That is to hear and act on the Word of God. I really like the word responsibility. It is, yung root word niya ay response. In a way, kung, kung ang, ang ating bubuin ay yung ating relationship with Christ, we already have that relationship with Christ. Now, what is our response? Now that we have the relationship with Christ. And what's our responsibility? Ano yung ating response? Hear and act on God's word. Sabi po sa verses 24 hanggang 27, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. 
the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. So, sinundan po ng Panginoon yung kanyang pagtuturo sa magitan ng pagbibigay diin sa kahalagahan ng foundation. He compared those who, who hear and act on God's word as someone who builds a house on a solid foundation which is a rock. While those who didn't are like someone who builds a house on sand which is not a good foundation. Binigyang halaga po talaga ng Panginoon yung pagpili ng tamang pundasyon and according to Him, yung tamang pundasyon, yun po ay hindi lang yung salita ng Diyos. Kung hindi, ang right foundation ay pagdinig at paggawa sa sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Marami pong may salita ng Diyos. Marami nga pong may hawak ng Bible eh. Do they have the right foundation? No. Yung ba nga hindi binabasa yung salita ng Diyos eh? Binabasa man, hindi ginagawa kung ano yung itinuturo. Yeah, it's not just about studying. It's not just about hearing God's Word. It's about hearing and acting, obeying what the Word of God says. So you don't just hear it, you act on it. The Word of God plays a crucial role in advancing God's kingdom. Tandaan niyo po ito, we cannot advance God's kingdom if God's Word is not with us. We need to study it. We need to obey it. It's the same with our solid foundation. When testing comes, sandaan nyo, parang yung itinuturo ng Panginoong Isus, kapag hindi solid yung foundation, when testing comes, it won't be able to stand. Kaya marami pong humihinto, maraming nawawala, kasi wala pong tamang pundasyon, kasi wala po ang pakikinig at pagsunod sa salita ng John. If it is built on a solid foundation, it will stand, it will not crumble crumble or fall. Sabi po ni James sa chapter 1 verses 22 to 25, But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Yung mga nakikinig lang daw at hindi gumagawa, niloloko lang yung sarili nila. Why? Kasi, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face on In a mirror, for once he has looked at himself and gone away. He has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. Narinig po ba yung mga patid? Yung mga guma- hindi daw gumagawa ng salita ng Diyos, yung kanila napapakinggan ng salita ng Diyos, niloloko lang nila yung kailan sarili, parang nanalamin, nakita yung sarili sa salamin, and then pagkatapos nakalimutan ko na itsura niya, pero hindi daw katulad ng mga nakikinig at gumagawa, lahat daw ng kanyang gagawin, pagpapalain. Alam mo, you will know whether you have the right foundation or not. Malalaman mo kung itaniyo ka sa tamang pundasyon, kapag gustong gusto mong makinig ng salita ng Diyos, at sumusunod ka sa iyong napapakinggan. Big sabihin nun, you are on solid ground. When calamity strikes, you will be able to, to take your stand. Alam mo, advancing God's kingdom, asahan nyo na po, maraming opposition, maraming hahad lang. When, when you have the right foundation, walang problema. But when you don't, you won't be able to take your stand and, and advance God's kingdom. Only those who love God's word, those who study and practice it, You know, those who obey what God says, they are the ones who can advance God's kingdom. We are in such a time that, be, that, that people go to church or belong to a church because of so many reasons. Nandyan yung maganda yung worship, komportable yung sanctuary, air-conditioned. Nandyan yung mga kaibigan ko, marami kaming artista, celebrities, mga sikat na tao. Uh, convenient para sa akin yung aming church. Uh, yung iba ay, Napilitan lang kasi dinala ng nanay, ng tatay. O, oh, masaya dito sa aming church. Ang sarap ng coffee. Pagkatapos ng, ng, ng worship, may fellowship, coffee fellowship. And those are not bad things. Tandaan niyo mga kapatid, I hope the reason why we belong to our church is because of God's word. Kasi mahal natin ang Diyos, mahal natin yung kanyang salita, pinapakinggan natin siya. At sinusunod natin siya. Um, ito pong 2020, this is my 30th year 
of serving the Lord. Na, ang bilis lang ng panahon. Tatlumpong taon na po ako naglilingkod sa Diyos. At pasalamat ko yung mga kasabayan ko sila. Pastor Ariel, Pastor John, Pastor Juni. Kasama ko pa rin. Although iba-iba po kami ng churches, magkakasama pa rin po kami sa gawain. We stand the test of time. We stand kahit yung mga calamities na pinagdaanan namin, mga bagyo ng buhay, nandito pa rin po kami. Alam nyo na nagsisimula kami, uh, ang dami-dami naming full-time workers in sa church. We were more than 40, 40 plus. And yet, pagdating ng panahon, may mga umayaw, may mga bumagsak sa kasalanan, may mga huminto, may mga nawala. At mabibilang na lang sa daliri yung nagpatuloy. Alam nyo, kung ano yung nakita ko ni Susi, at yun yung pinapasalamat ko sa Diyos. Ang pinapasalamat ko sa Diyos, may nagturo sa amin na mahalin, kauhawan, kagutuman, at gawin ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Yun yung susi. Kaya kami nakapagpatuloy. Kaya yun yung itinuturo ko po sa inyo. Gusto nyo uh, another 30 years pa uh, ng inyong buhay ay, ay para sa Diyos lamang in advancing His kingdom? Gusto nyo another 50 years? This is the key. Diba? This is the right foundation. Diba? Obey what you hear from the Lord. Period. 30 years. Hindi magiging matagal. Mahugulat ka. Naka-50 years ka na sa Panginoon. Lastly, mga kapatid, what are we using to build? Ano yung materials na ginagamit natin? Ito isang napakagandang building material. Ang tawag dito, reliance in the Holy Spirit. Reliance in God for everything. It is the knowing the authority You know, to serve God, to live your Christian life, is not from you, but coming from God alone. Uh, yun yung ating reliance. Alam natin, hindi, hindi yung kapangyarihan, yung lakas upang makapagpatuli sa paglilingkod at makapamuhay ng matagumpay, hindi dahil sa atin, hindi galing sa atin, kundi galing sa Diyos na ating pinaglilingkuran. Sabi po sa verse 28 to 29, When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at His teaching, For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Nung dumating po ang Panginoong Jesus dito sa lupa, may mga kasabayan po siyang uh, napakaraming religious leaders. Nandiyan yung Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, at yung iba pong mga teachers of the law, experts of the law. At itong mga tao pong ito ang gagaling sa batas. They know the law inside out. They know uh, the, the Old Testament scriptures inside out. They studied it since they were young in a very strict manner. Yung iba nga sa kanila, they could, they could recite everything kasi bahagi yun ang kanilang strict training. They were well versed and well taught in the law. And yet, Jesus is distinguished from them. Angat sa iba ang Panginoong Isus. Angat ang Panginoong Isus sa kanila. Why? This is not the first time you will see people being amazed with this teaching. What separates Jesus from the authorities of the law? He teaches with authority. Ano ibig sabihin nun? What does it mean to teach with authority? How, how can Jesus teach with authority? Alam niyo po, simpleng simpleng sikreto ng Panginoong Jesus. How can He teach with authority? Kasi yung itinuturo niya, kasi yung sinasabi niya, kasi yung pinangmi-ministeryo pinang niya, hindi galing sa kanya. Maliwanag kay Jesus kan, kung kanino galing. Galing sa kanyang ama. Sabi po sa John chapter 12, verses 44 and 49, And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me does not believe in me, but in him who sent me. And then in verse 49, For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father Himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. Nandito po yung susi ng Panginoong Isus. Alam niyo po, Jesus is the Son of God. He is God Himself. He could have easily taken all the gro- glory and yet He humbly, humbly said, He who believes in me does not believe in me, but in Him who sent me. I was sent according to Jesus. And not only that, He, he doesn't speak on His own initiative, but What he hears from his father, that's what he speaks. He was not only sent, but whatever he says, 
he received that from his father. It is not on his own. Although he's very much God, 100% God si Jesus, and at the same time, 100% man. Hindi niya ginamit yung kanyang pagkajos, kundi yung kanyang pagiging tao. When he was here on earth, alam niya yon. hindi niya ginamit yung kanyang pagiging Diyos, kundi he relied full reliance on his Father in the Holy Spirit. So his power and authority came from God and not from himself. Bakit ginawa yun ng Panginoong Yesus? He did it for us kasi gusto niya tayong turuan. He did it to show us how to do it kasi alam ng Panginoon, a time will come, tayo naman ang gagawa para sa kaharian ng Diyos. At kailangan maging maliwanag sa atin, our authority, our power is not from ourselves. We don't do it because of us. Dahil magaling tayo, mabait tayo, alam natin yung buong Bible, matagal na tayo sa ministry. No! That is not the source of our authority. Just like Jesus, our source of authority is God and God alone. Kaya ngayon, full reliance, full surrender and dependency on the Holy Spirit is very important. Why? Because we are weak. We are so limited. We fall. We fail on our own. We learn to rely fully on God. And when we are able to do that, that's the time we are truly able to advance God's kingdom. Let me end this way. Last year, Paul, was the most difficult time of my life. And at the same time, the best blessing in my life. Bakit po? Uh, nung nag-preach po ako sa inyo last year, May, pagkatapos po nung May, birthday po yun ni Anne, May 19, pumunta po ako ng Nepal. Sa Nepal po, nagturo ako sa mga uh, pastors and leaders. At habang nagtuturo po ako na dumaan po ako sa pagkakasakit, kala ko nga po mamamatay na ako doon. And yet, nakauwi po ako. Nung umuwi po ako, I was so sick. Kaya pagdating ko po rito, nagpatingin ako. Ang daming doktor yung tumingin. I think more than 10 doctors. Pero ginawa nila lahat ng test. Blood test, CT scan, uh, ultrasound, mga gadgets na ikinabit sa puso ko. At kung saan sa ang bahagi ng katawan ko. And yet, they couldn't find anything. Sinasabi nila, baka hindi physical ang sakit mo. Baka it's already psychological. In a way, sinasabi nila, parang nababaliw na ako. Nababaliw na nga ba ako? That made it worst. Walang makapagsabi sa akin kung anong problema na aking katawan. One time nga nagkita kami ni Jel, uh, pina, uh, binigay ko sa kanya, iniscan ko lahat ng results para baka may, may tulong siya. At nung pinakita rin niya doon sa mga kakilala niya, doctor, it's the same thing they said. They couldn't find anything na, na magdudulot ng kasakitan sa akin. But I'm losing weight. Wala akong ganang kumain. Nanghihina ako araw-araw. What seems to be the problem? Dumating po ako sa point na akala ko mamatay na ako. Tinawag ko na yung aking asawa, yung aking mga anak. Nagpapaalam na ako. Alam ni Ann yan. Uh, alam nung mga anak ko yan. Sinasabi, hinahabilin ko na sa kanila ang lahat. And much worse, dumating po ako sa time na gusto ko na po tapusin ang lahat. Kasi hindi po ako makatulog. I can't sleep for five straight days. So, anong gagawin ko? Alam niyo po kung anong nakapagpabago ng lahat sa akin. Dumating po ako sa point na wala na akong believe sa sarili. Alam ko wala na akong kayang gawin. Hinanghina na ako physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And that's the time I, 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 I truly found kung kanina dapat nang gagaling yung aking lakas. Si Anpo yung ginamit ng Diyos. Sabi niya, mahal, just surrender everything to the Lord. You need to fully rely on the Lord for everything. And I thought, alam ko na yun. Akala ko, alam ko na yun. Ano ibig sabihin nung sa Diyos lang ako magdidepende. Sa Diyos lang ako aasa. Pero noong time na yun na hindi ako makabangon sa higaan, noong time na yun na hindi na ako makakain, hindi ako makatulog, natuto ako na kahit yung isang minuto ng tulog, iaasa ko sa Diyos. Yung babangon lang ako sa higaan, iaasa ko sa Diyos. Yung tatayo lang ako, iaasa ko sa Diyos. At ginamit yun ng Lord para matuto kong sa Kanya lang umasa. In fact, during the, the worst time of my life, uh, nag-resign po ako sa lahat. Hindi lang naman po ako sa Christ the world nag-resign. Kaya po ako nag-resign kasi hindi ko na po kayang gawin. I feel na wala na akong magagawa. Uh, I, I am so unable. 
Kaya nag-resign po ako even sa aming organization. Pero sabi ng organization namin, di namin yan tatanggapin. We still believe na ikaw ang nilagay ng Diyos sa, sa position na yan. Uh, kaya nag, nagpatuloy po ako noong nasa bahay lang ako. Wala pa pong lockdown, work from home na ako kasi hindi po ako makalabas ng bahay dahil hinang-hina ako. And then during that worst time, mga uh, August, July, uh, nawalan po ng pastor yung Jesus King of Queens Community Church. They came to me. Sabi nila, Pastor, uh, pwede bang ikaw nalang magpastor uli sa amin kasi nag-resign yung pastor namin. And sabi ko, sigurado ba kayo? But... Hindi na ako yung Joshua na kilala nyo dati. Hindi na ako yung Joshua na uh, malakas, maraming pwedeng gawin, maraming kayang gawin. Wala na akong kayang gawin. Pero give me one month, I'll pray for it. And I prayed for it for one month. At maliwanag sa akin, go ahead Joshua. Since natutunan mo na na umasa sa akin para sa maliliit na bagay, papakita ko sa'yo kung anong kaya kong gawin sa malalaking bagay sa buhay mo. And so I started pastoring the church. Nung nagsimula po akong magpastor, grabe yung sitwasyon ng church. Baon sa utang, napakalaki ng utang. Uh, wala nang umaaten. May time pa nga daw, siyam na lang yung umaaten sa church. At higit sa lahat, Sunday na lang yung ministry. Wala nang uh, kasiglahan. Halos patay na yung church. May nagsabi nga sa akin, isara mo na lang. Wala nang mangyayari dyan. But I praise God, hindi ko sinara. Sabi ko, Lord, tinawag mo ko para dito. I will rely on you. Within two months, nabayaran po yung napakalaking utang. And then, nagbalikan yung mga tao. And then, bumalik yung sigla. And then, nagbalikan yung mga ministries. In fact, nung nag-anniversary anniversary kami last February, manghang-mangha kami sa dami ng mga tao na hindi namin akalain kung saan manggagaling. May umaaten sa amin, walk-in, hindi namin ina-announce. Binalik ng Diyos yung mga tao. Binalik yung kasiglahan. Binalik yung kaperahan na kabangon yung church. Kasabayan ng pagbangon ko. Ano po yung susi? Full reliance on the Lord. That's how we advance God's kingdom. I hope mga kapatid, narinig natin ang tinig ng Diyos. At simple and simple lang po talaga. If you want to advance God's kingdom, build your relationship with Christ. That's where we start. At pagkatapos ng mga kapatid, kapag nabuo na natin, patuloy natin binubuo yung ating relasyon kay Kristo, let our responsibility be to hear and obey what Jesus will tell us. And finally, learn to rely fully on the Holy Spirit. Rely on God for everything. If you do all those things, if we do all those things, we'll be able to advance God's kingdom. 